In this clip we are going to demonstrate using the text import wizard to import ASCII or text files, in this case XYZ files, to create a surface and also how to constrain the triangulation of that surface so that we don't get erroneous data in there. And we're running inroads select series, this happens to be select series 1. And I'm going to be using the taskbars on the left side which is the new interface that's integrated with MicroStation, saves us some screen real estate. And as you can see, we do have the standard Bentley Inroads um, dialog open, so we can still use that. But for this recording, we're basically going to be using the File and the Surface command groups. But I'm going to be executing those, as I said, from the task part. So maybe it'll help you get a little bit used to the, uh, the new interface. So what we're going to start with is um, uh, inroads and we're going to import the file. So inroads is still running, we're just not seeing the dialog. And we're going to go through the text import wizard to import four text XYZ files that have been provided for us. So let's go ahead and get started. We also just have the center line of a channel along with stationing displayed just for somewhat of a frame of reference. So taking it from the top, we're going to go to the Inroads file pull down, start the text import wizard. We're going to create a surface. And we just have to browse to the file that we want to import. And we need to change the extension to so the XYZ files aren't filtered out. And I'm going to grab the file name that we used. There is a something called the parent field um, that we can populate when we import this. It becomes a property of the items that are put into the DTM. We'll sh show you how that comes into play later. We are going to start importing at line 1, so we can just walk through the wizard here. We are going to import all the lines, and they are delimited, either with a space or a tab in this case. And if I take space off and enable tab, we can see that we're not getting columns, so evidently there's a space separating the, the data. As I step through it, we just have to identify what's coming in and which column, and in this case was easting, northing, and elevation. And I accidentally picked easting there. You're going to see what happens. Inroads will uh, QC that for us. And instead of specifying at import the feature type and the point type or how it's treated during triangulation, I'm going to define those ahead of time so that when we save this wizard setup out, we won't have to redefine that. It'll already be there for us. And we are just bringing in random points. So there's a feature style for that, and then the point type is random during triangulation. So when I go to save as, we get a little bit of an error there. And I did goof up. It says uh, Easting can't be used twice. That column should have been Elevation. So now we're going to save this wizard out. And we're just going to give it a name. And we're just going to call it Standard XYZ Format. So when we bring in the next three files, we don't have to step through and instruct the wizard what's coming in at what column, what line to start with, and what point types to put it in as a DTM. So some of the steps will be taken care of for us already. So now that that wizard's been saved out, we'll go ahead and name the surface that we want to create. And just a seed name that we want to use. So what are the random points going to be called when they go into the DTM? And again, the feature style and point type's been pre-populated for us from the previous dialog box. And here's where I'm pasting in that file name. We'll show you later where that comes into play. But it lets me have a little bit of a history of where my data came from because I am combining four different files. So we have the first file imported. Let's go ahead and get the second one. So we have to reinitialize the text import wizard. Actually, before we do that, let's just look at the perimeter of the data we did bring in. So it's just up on the north end of the project there. And the perimeter, again, is not again, but the perimeter is the limits of the active triangles in the DTM. So now that we've saved that wizard, we can see it's in the wizard uh, name dropdown. We can go select the second file we need to import. And again, we're just going to 
copy that name so we can paste it in later. And you can see we didn't have to step through as many uh, steps in the wizard. We're just going to replace the uh, file name in here and we're good to go. So we're appending to the DTM. We keep adding points to it. Go get the third file. Capture that name again. And finally, we'll go get the last file. So if this is a standard file format that I get typically, we can, uh, we'll have this available to us every time we use the same XIN file. So we only have to define it once and we can reuse it. And that's just the collapsed inroads dialog box. So to see what we have, let's redisplay that perimeter. And I do have pencil lock on, so the previous display will be erased and redrawn. And of course we need to retriangulate because we appended or added to the DTM. And we can see we have a big concave area. Um, just from experience working with DTMs, we should know that's not right. And what's happening is we're getting uh, triangles that span across the uh, concave area. Before we do that, worry about that. Let's go take a look at the DTM. Surface properties gives us the overall XYZ range of the DTM, but if we want to actually look at the details that are in the DTM, we're trying to find a surface uh, feature here. I'm even struggling with the new um, icons, so we're going to go back to the old tried and true dialog box. But I'm going to surface feature and feature properties. Now I can see these groups of spot elevations. I brought in four files. If you notice on the bottom the parent name is populated. As we pick the uh, different spot elevations that we brought in or groups of spot elevations, I can see the parent name changes. If there's something wrong with one of those files, I can simply delete that group of random points and re-import it. Or if the surveyor gives me an updated file, same thing. I can replace them. So it helps us manage our data. We know where it came from. So back to the triangles. We know that the triangles or the survey data probably follows the horizontal alignment and really shouldn't span that wide area. So if we take a look at the triangles for this DTM, we can see that they're, they've been formed across concave areas and that's not correct. And the problem with that is inroad sees those triangles. It doesn't know if they're good or bad triangles, but it will use it to extract information from. And if we display contours here, we can see that it contours that area. Same if we profile or cross-section and our profiles or cross-sections um, span that area, it'll give us what we would appear to be existing ground and we just know that's not correct. So what we want to do is we want to fix that or remove the triangles that really shouldn't be there. And on top of that we want to constrain the DTM so those triangles don't reform. So what the workflow is is to remove or delete the extraneous triangles, display the perimeter of the DTM, which is simply a closed microstation graphic that traces the edge of the active triangles. Then we take that microstation graphic and import it into the DTM from gra you know, import from graphics as an exterior feature. An exterior feature constrains the limits of the triangulation process. So here we're using the delete triangle command which is simply draw a crossing line, so it's two data points and one more data point to accept the solution. And as you notice, they highlight as we cross them. We just have to be careful not to delete too much information. There is no undo command, so we do have to use some care. And I'm just going to show you the overall process here. I'm not going to take the time to really uh, make this a super refined DTM. But what the workflow is, is to work your way along the DTM and remove some of those extraneous triangles that you know really shouldn't be there. So here's a few more we'll remove. And we'll go up on the northern part of the project and get rid of a few more.
and I'm just going to remove the graphic display of the triangles. It's just microstation elements. And also I'll remove the contours. We don't need those anymore. And the existing perimeter is displayed. It had been displayed with pencil mode on or pencil lock. If I redisplay it, again, that'll be erased and redrawn. So now we can see the limits of the active triangles in the DTM. Now at this point, if we were to retriangulate, those triangles would reform. So what we want to do is take that closed microstation shape and put that as a feature in the DTM. And what we're going to do is put that in as an exterior or an exterior boundary. So right back to surface and we're doing import from graphics. We're going to grab a single element and we can use that element's elevations because it did trace the DTM, uh, the triangle legs at elevation. So we're simply going to give it a name. Each feature needs a name. We've called it exterior. Feature style is V exterior boundary and point type is the exterior which is the critical part. And you can only have one exterior boundary in a DTM but that does constrain the uh, triangulation. Now I've just deleted the microstation graphics. We just don't need those because there actually is a feature in the DTM that's going to constrain that. And we can prove that by redisplaying our triangles, see what happens. And we can see we're not spanning the areas where we did remove those triangles. Obviously there's a little bit of cleanup that should still be done on that DTM, but we're presenting a workflow here. And there's my uh, feature properties button. Now I can see I do have an exterior feature along with the spot elevations that I have in the DTM. That'll that constrains the DTM. And that's the end of this clip.